I am so pleased to have this opportunity to talk about the work Munger did on the lethal injection litigation challenging the Bureau of Prisons execution protocol. The team from Munger was Ginger Anders, Jonathan Meltzer, Brendan Gantz, April Hu, and Chris Lynch. It feels long overdue to recognize Munger for their work on method of execution challenges. This is because Don Verrilli and Ginger Anders have worked on so many important cases over about 15 years. Um, this has included the Taylor case from Missouri in all stages, the Morales case from California in all stages, uh, and then Bayes v. Reese, of course, in the Supreme Court, and Don did that argument in the Supreme Court, um, the Johnson case from Missouri in the Eighth Circuit and in the Supreme Court, amicus briefs in Supreme Court cases, um, and then just countless issues and cases that they consulted on, supported litigation teams, and helped. I don't think it's possible to cover all of it. Throughout 2020 and 2021, Munger worked with about 20 other plaintiffs and their counsel through many, many rounds of emergency injunction litigation, including two emergency stay rounds uh, for Mr. Bernard after his execution date was set in the fall of 2020. During that six week period, the Munger team partnered with counsel for Orlando Hall and then Alfred Bourgeois to seek stays of execution in the circuit court, on banc, and in the Supreme Court. So I hope this gives you a sense of their tremendous contribution in just this one area. Um, and then along the same lines, it's important to note that lethal injection is just one area where Munger has worked on behalf of death sentence prisoners. Many colleagues have shared stories of lawyers from Munger generously sharing their time, sharing their expertise, taking calls, answering questions, reading pleadings, um, and just always so willing to help, so willing to jump in. So I know I speak for many when I say thank you to Munger uh, for their mighty, mighty work. Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful for this recognition and for everything that the ABA Death Penalty Representation Project does. MTO has a long history of pro bono capital representation and the past 18 months or so have been no exception. Uh, among other things, the cases I've been involved in have included uh, representing Jahar Sarnayev in the Supreme Court and also representing Brandon Bernard last year in the collective effort to use challenges to the BOP's execution protocol to stave off the executions. But of course, anytime one firm is recognized for its efforts, it's a little bit of an oversimplification uh, because so many others have been involved in these efforts. So I just wanted to say a little bit about that, um, both those in the capital defense community who do this incredibly taxing work every day, uh, and also others in private practice who have contributed so much. So in the Sarnayev case, it's been the federal defenders of New York who expertly guided the case through the First Circuit and who were able to get Jahar's death sentences vacated. And now that the Supreme Court has granted cert, it's been a real privilege to, to work with all of them through the summer to try to put together the best Supreme Court brief that we possibly could. And in the case of Brandon Bernard, you know, just thinking about all the lawyers involved in the BOP protocol case, there was the Philadelphia Capital Habeas Unit, the Georgia Federal Defenders, firms like Skadden Arps, Steptoe Johnson, Hogan Lovells, King and Spalding, and others. Um, and of course, the leadership of Megan McCracken, who has been uh, the preeminent resource on lethal injection for many years now and Ruth Friedman and her team at the Capital Habeas Project, the Federal Capital Habeas Project. It was a tremendous team effort and everyone pitched in in ways that were really inspiring. You know, through the fall, it didn't matter whose client had the most immediate date. You know, everybody contributed, everybody helped out in the middle of the night, everybody you know, drafted sections of briefs and just did whatever needed to be done. But of course, despite that effort, we weren't able to stop 13 executions in seven months. And I think about that and I think about Brandon, our client, a lot. Um, and so I just really hope that we at MTO can continue helping in any way we can to prevent something like that from ever happening again. So thank you for this recognition. And I just really hope that we can continue this important work with you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very proud to be part of Munger Tools and Olson, a law firm that has both challenged a deeply flawed system for executing human beings and represented individual defendants who were unlawfully convicted and sentenced to die, having received totally inadequate representation by court-appointed lawyers at their trials. Uh, in 2006, uh, we took on a case on behalf of an individual, Mr. Morales, uh, challenging the 
effort by California prison officials to ram through regulations governing, governing the execution of individuals by lethal injection uh, without any opportunity for public comment or review by the California Office of Administrative Law or review by the courts. We successfully argued that the Administrative Procedure Act applied to such regulations over contentions by the state that the regulations were exempt because they were not generally applicable and applied only at a single prison where executions were conducted, San Quentin. The trial court uh, enjoined any further executions in California unless and until the California prison officials adopted a lethal injection protocol that complied with the Administrative Procedure Act. For a decade that thereafter, uh, prison officials attempted, but unsuccessfully, to adopt such regulations that were consistent with the Administrative Procedure Act. And that resulted in an effective moratorium on executions in California for a dozen years. Uh, you know, in 2016, California voters did adopt Proposition 66, which now formally exempts lethal injection regulations from the APA. But no executions occurred under that. And in 2019, Governor Newsom re repealed the protocols by executive order and imposed a moratorium on executions. So we're very proud that since 2007, when we brought the lawsuit originally challenging the lethal injection protocols, there have been no executions in California. I'm very proud of all of this work that, that the firm has done uh, in the area of the death penalty and look forward to doing more of it uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Munger Tolls has a long track record of working on death penalty litigation. And in particular, Brad Phillips and others at Munger had worked on the Morales case, which was a successful challenge under the California Administrative Procedure Act the California's lethal injection protocol. And that case, the, the result in that case ensured that the death penalty was not administered in California for almost a decade. And this was a case that Munger Tolls brought while I was still in law school before I joined Munger. After I joined Munger, when the opportunity arose, I was moved to help continue the effort against lethal injection in California. And by this point, the state of California had promulgated a new lethal injection regulation after Morales. And we partnered with the ACLU of Northern California to bring a Public Records Act action under California law to get public records so that Californians could submit informed public comment on the new lethal injection regulation. And in that Public Records Act action, the state of California took some very aggressive positions related to privileges over documents and in challenging those positions, we were able to take testimony from the lawyer who had managed the process in creating the new lethal injection regulation. And that testimony cast doubt on the legality of the entire administrative process. So even before we brought that administrative procedure, even though before we brought what we thought was gonna be an Administrative Procedure Act action, the state rushed out to put out a new lethal injection regulation. Uh, we then brought up, after the Public Records Act action, we brought an APA challenge to that new regulation that was called the Masters case. And while the Masters case was pending, the governor of California signed an executive order putting in place a moratorium on the death penalty in California. And that executive order, of course, ended the case and ended the death penalty in California under the order. And it means a great deal to me to have had a chance to play a small role against the campaign in the campaign against the death penalty in California. And I'm thankful to the many at Munger Tolls, the ACLU, and many other organizations and law firms that have spent so much time and effort on this important fight throughout the country. I'd like to thank the ABA to, for giving this honor. My name is April Hu, and I'm an attorney at Munger Tolls and Olson. I want to spend some time describing a death penalty case we handled last year for someone you may have heard a lot about, Brandon Bernard. Brandon's case was part of a larger challenge to the execution protocol that the federal BOP had put in place in 2019. I think we all held out hope that when the administration began to rush schedule people for, for execution, that his name would not be on the list. Those hopes were dashed when we received word that his execution had been scheduled for December 10th. 
after which our efforts were really geared towards trying to get a stay based on our argument that the execution protocol violated the Federal Death Penalty Act because it didn't comply with the notice and scheduling provisions of Texas state law for execution. We fought for Brandon all the way to the Supreme Court, where we lost both a closely divided vote for rehearing on Bonk in the DC Circuit and ultimately before the Supreme Court itself. Throughout it all, we were fortunate enough to be on video calls with Brandon, who insisted on keeping our spirits up. Brandon was an incredible human being with grace and poise in equal measure. He would tell us as we frantically worked on his stay application and the calls for clemency increased that he would be around in the spring to knit us all blankets in thanks. Brandon was a very gifted knitter. We joked about him having a direct line to Kim Kardashian West who lobbied hard for his clemency application. But the law is difficult and it is terribly inhumane at its worst. And I personally have never felt that more than during our final call with Brandon when we told him the Supreme Court had denied his stay. And he continued still up until the point he was taken away by the guards to thank us and to lift our spirits. His last words were to the victim's family. And they were this, if my death is what is needed to heal pain, then so be it. Brandon was pronounced dead at 9.27 PM. He was 40 and he deserved so much more than what was done to him. <laughs>